What's the most powerful tool that you have access to today to scale your brand, business, and profits? I'll give you a hint. It's something that every culture, nationality, and ethnicity has, every country, and it has been around since the dark ages. Do you know what that tool is, Anthony? What's up, all? Welcome to the Born and Crate Podcast. I am Anthony Rudolph, and we got my host here, Mrs. K.L. Jones. What's up, good people? Everything's well. So that question is a pretty, it's a big question, um, but what's the answer to that question? It is storytelling. It is storytelling. Storytelling has been around for ages, since the dark ages. You think about the Bible. The Bible is full of stories. You grew up as a child matriculating through school. Mm -hmm. Storytelling was a huge part of your education. Um, being in the workplace, we hear stories all of the time. If you watch television and film, storytelling is the genesis of entertainment and mm -hmm. everything that we do and say, whether it's a commercial, whether we're at the family reunion or cookout, there's right. always stories always that stories. are being told, right? Yep. But most business owners do not have an understanding of how to leverage storytelling mm -hmm to really massively and exponentially grow their brands, their business, and their profits. So that's what we're going to talk about today on this episode of the Born to Create podcast. Don't forget, we were born to create, so don't you dare put us in a box and don't you allow anybody else to put you in one either because you too were born to create. Yes, we're all creators in our own way. Yeah. We have that, we're all given that gift to create, so why not use it? Absolutely. Right. So if you guys want to learn more and be more and connect more with Elle and I, we have our Born to Create exclusive membership where you can connect with us directly. We have a community. You can learn how to build and scale your business to get to four figures, six figures, seven figures, whatever you want, you can do. But we teach you and guide you through everything you need to know about building a successful brand. And we use storytelling as one of the anchors as far as what we teach. Yeah, All right? absolutely. We do. So um, I had thought about, about storytelling. Um, it reminds me of, of sales, right? People say, well, you know what? I hate to sell. I mm -hmm. hate selling. But if you think about it, we sell in our everyday life. We do. We sell our, our boss on taking a day off. We sell our, our spouses. We, we sell our kids. We, we sell, right, without knowing it. But when it comes down to making money selling, we kind of get kind of like, uh, I, I just I, nervous and don't like it. Same thing with stories. Mm -hmm. We're constantly telling stories to, to people in our lives, our kids, yep. our spouses, our friends. We're telling stories. But when it comes to making money, we feel like our stories are boring. They have no impact. So I guess it's more like how you look at what your story can do for you, right? And if it's, if it's natural, it's natural in talking to your friends. It's natural mm -hmm. in talking to your spouses. It's natural in talking to your coworkers. And it has to be just as natural as when you're when you're building your brand and building your business. Yeah. Right? And one of the surefire ways to do that, you talked about how it's natural for us mm -hmm. to talk to our family members and our friends and, you know, people that we're close mm -hmm. to, even our neighbors. Well, you build that connection with your audience the same way. It's through the power of storytelling. Yeah. When you focus on story and you've brought this up before, Seth Golden came up with the phrase, facts tell, stories right. sell. So story selling is really a big Stories buzz smart. now um, in the marketing space, but it's because it's true. Yeah. If you, I'm someone who does not enjoy sales. Yeah. I don't consider myself a salesperson, regardless of what my family and friends say. <laughs> You're a salesperson. Go ahead. <laughs> But I love storytelling yeah. that I resonate with. I am a storyteller, bona fide storyteller. It's something that I enjoy. Storytelling has helped me personally mm -hmm. navigate through trauma, mm -hmm. you know, traumatic experiences and setbacks and difficult situations in my life. So I understand the powerful transformation that happens right. within storytelling. So it only made sense for me to integrate that technique into my business as you know right. a business leader as a brand strategist and a, a media expert but here's where most people miss it and you touched on it a little bit mm -hmm. is that people think that their stories are boring so right. they don't really feel like they have a story to tell actually most people think that storytelling is stupid 
They don't okay. think that it's necessary or they think that storytelling doesn't have a place in business. If you right. talk to the everyday business owner who doesn't consider themselves a marketer, right? Mm -hmm. Most people who have a business background who also understand marketing, they understand the power mm -hmm. of storytelling. But if you just take the everyday business owner who has maybe a brick and mortar store, mm -hmm. especially someone who's not necessarily operating online, they don't see the point in it. Mm -hmm. It's like who they, they don't understand the true power that they have through um, storytelling. And we'll get into there's plenty of different storytelling techniques, but we'll get into two and give some real life examples yeah. um, of what that looks like so that we make it really a, a tangible experience for our listeners and our viewers to, on today's episode. But people just they either think that it's not important or they fall into the other category yeah. of I know I should be telling stories. Yeah. And because you've got all the gurus that are saying storytelling, 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 then they just run out and it's like word vomit, right? right? right. There's People no structure. Think, think too much, right? Because yeah. if, if you walk into a brick and mortar, the owner there is going to tell you a story about how they got started. This is my, from, came from my grandmother, my grandfather, mm -hmm. my mom started this. So they're telling stories. I just think they overthink the process yeah. because they're doing it anyway. Yeah. That's what I think. That's part of it. But again, I think the bigger part is for those who do identify with the importance of telling mm -hmm. story, they're not telling stories the right way. Okay. And so there's a huge opportunity for people to learn the different storytelling techniques, right. to learn the different storytelling formulas and frameworks, which we share, mm -hmm. you know, within our membership. But not only it's not what we just teach, it's what we live. It's right. what we actually apply in our businesses, you know, in our business partnership, but also in our respective businesses as well on a daily basis. So let's get into two uh, storytelling frameworks or formulas that we're going to talk about today. One is the hero's journey. And there's a gentleman by the name of Joseph Campbell. I believe that's his name. If it's not correct, we'll make sure we put the correct name mm -hmm. in the show notes. Um, but he is the author of The Hero with a Thousand Faces. Yeah. You familiar with that book? I am. Okay. I was going to say the hero with a million no. faces, but it's a thousand Or that. <laughs> or, or that. Either one. A, be, a million is better than a thousand. A million is better than a thousand, right? And so, but my point with that is that his he came up with this framework for storytelling called the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. And it is actually one of the most popular formulas there is. We see it in films. Mm -hmm. We see it in television all the time. So usually there's a protagonist, right? Yeah. And then with the protagonist, there is the departure from their normal life mm -hmm. or, you know, circumstances. And then there's this middle part where it's like the intention, something happens, right? right, right. And then the end result is mm -hmm. like the protagonist's return right. from who they were before. So let's put that framework kind of in a real life example. Okay. All right. So my hero's journey, and this is actually one of the primary storytelling frameworks that I use in my own personal mm -hmm. brand and business that has helped me to grow very rapidly. Um, so much so that I've garnered media attention, earned media attention, um, because there's also paid media attention, which we'll talk about on another episode. But in 2009, mm -hmm. I relocated from my hometown in Columbus, Ohio, back to Southern California. And I say back to because although I was born in Ohio, I was raised between Ohio and California, literally back and forth. Wow, okay. <laughs> so, um, but throughout that entire time, I've always been acting. I've always yeah. been in the creative <laughs> arts. My mother had me, you know, I did... Um, beauty pageants and I was in dance classes. I went to dance school. I went to etiquette school. I was in acting choir, anything that was mm -hmm. creative based. Your girl did it <laughs> right <laughs> all the time since I was probably about seven or eight years old. So I've always act acting was just a love of mine. I would sit my stuffed animals up yeah. 
and, you know, line them up against the wall and pretend I was the teacher, <laughs> right, and teach them and give them lessons. So it's just something that I enjoy doing. Um, and it really came in handy when my father was murdered when I was 10. And it's so funny because recently my mom and I were having a conversation about the day's events that we learned that my father had been killed. And her version, her story of it, which was an accurate depiction of what happened, was vastly different wow. from mine. And it was in, like this was just in the past week or two. Mm. And it was in that moment I was like, oh, my gosh. Story to like I really dug into this story because it I told this story about what happened to myself mm -hmm. to protect myself. So the reality right. was is that my mother called my great grandmother to give her our new phone number. Uh -huh. My story was that I had friends over for a sleepover and my great grandmother called and I picked up the phone at the same time as my mom. And on the other end of the phone was my great grandmother saying, James has been shot. Hmm. And my response was, is he dead? Well, what really happened was that part of it was true, but there were filler moments that I put, there was this filler stories that I told in an effort to protect myself. And I didn't even realize that I had done that, right? So that was like, yeah. you know, even though we think about storytelling as entertaining, sometimes we tell stories to protect ourselves from right. things and events, you know, and I said traumatic events. So that was my experience with that in that way. Why was that so pivotal? And well, how was it so pivotal in your story, story, storytelling, I guess, matter? Because you, you said that changed, right? So yeah. why was that so pivotal? Like what made that so pivotal, pivotal and changing the way you told stories? Me, t me discovering that I had told that story Correct. or just me telling that story way back then? You discovering. So what, what point, what point changed the way you told stories? Was, was what you said or what you found out or how you told the story? What changed the way you told stories or made you realize that, hey, now storytelling is so, is so important in, in everything? Yeah. So what. The, the change came before this recent discovery. Okay. Right. Um, but the, the change was that while you through storytelling, you really can create right. a whole new reality. Right. And you don't that reality doesn't have to be attached to the very thing that you're telling a story about. So okay. perfect example. When I moved back here in 2009 to pursue my acting career full time, it was on the heels of me being an executive in an mm -hmm. advertising um, and marketing agency, one of the largest in the world. And we had layoffs and it was during the housing crash. So it started mm -hmm. in like 2007, went on through 2008, 2009. And so my job was one of the first jobs to be eliminated. Wow. <laughs> and I found myself having going from having like this high multi figure job what as year, what year was this? This was in two thousand and seven when okay. I was laid off. Okay. Right. And so at that time I was still in my thirties. I had a great income, amazing benefits, worked for one of the largest advertising conglomerates in the world, was the only black female executive mm. in my mm. department. So it was a lot of, it was well, a yeah. big, big deal. And I was coming out of working for Limited Brands and Victoria's Secret, where I worked closely with executives. Okay. And I was a creative, um, I was a creative associate during my time at Victoria's Secret. So we lost everything. Yeah. Literally, we lost our home. Uh, my SUV was repoed. I remember my husband calling me. I was at work working late one night. We were working on a big project. It was a multi-million dollar project. And the the um, tow truck guy was <laughs> like at our house looking for my vehicle. And thankfully we had a garage. But thankfully yeah, even thankfully more. Thankfully we had a garage. We had a garage. We, we, we hit that bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't getting my Not today, but, tow truck guy. But thankfully <laughs> even more so, I was at work. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so then I kind of panicked because I was like, oh, do they, they know where I address, work? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it was like, oh, man. And I couldn't leave because yeah. we had this big project. So I remember just all these emotions coming up. But. Nonetheless, probably about six, seven months after that, um, maybe a little longer because af after I had my son, but um, I, I got laid off mm -hmm. along with like 200 other employees that included 
everyday employees as well as executive, right? Uh, so I found myself in this situation, well, me and my family, where we had to find somewhere else to right. live. And uh, my children and I ended up living with a family uh, whose children attended the same school as our daughters, who, by the way, at the time were both big time basketball players. Mm. So I took a job at McDonald's because that's all that I wow. could. Okay. <laughs> it was all that I could get. Like no one was hiring mm -hmm. and it was I was overqualified for everything, but I knew that I needed to do something. So I was working at McDonald's making twelve dollars an hour as a manager. Holla. That's a story for another day. Um, but at the end of that time, as it got closer to the end of the school year, my friend who we had moved in with, she was like, you're so talented. Mm. Like I, I watch you do so much and I don't want you to start allowing yourself to be defined by what you're doing right now. Yeah. Like what you find yourself having to do right now. And she's like, your mom lives in California. Why don't you, why don't you go there and like pursue your acting career full time? Oh, and I, at that I, time. I didn't know that part uh, about you. You did? I had no idea. No. All wow. the time? I did not know that. Oh my gosh. I swear I've told this story a million times. Not to me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, but at that time, I was not even thinking about pursuing acting full time because I was OK with what I was doing in media at that yeah. at that time. So I was still doing media at our church. I was still an on camera talent there locally. Um, I was still doing like independent films with, you know, other local filmmakers mm -hmm. and whatnot. So I was cool with that. But she stretched me to like be like, yo, don't go do something bigger. Yeah. Right. And so guess what? I left with seven hundred dollars. Wow. I always say me and Taraji have a parallel story because yeah. I left with seven hundred dollars. I sold, and that seven hundred dollars came from my car that I had sold. Um, that I had previously purchased for a thousand. There you go. <laughs> um, my son was like two years old at the time, and my girls they wanted to stay in Ohio mm. with their uh, biological dad so that they could finish school and play basketball. So my son and I packed it up. My mother bought us a ticket, and we came out to California. Wow! And very shortly after, I met you. It was that soon after? It was very soon after. It was it was within six months. Wow. Okay. It was within six months okay. that we met. Yep. And so in the hero's journey, there's that departure that we yeah. talked about. I left what I knew, what I was comfortable with. There was something that triggered the need to depart from what I knew. And for me, it was that domino effect of yeah. what happened after I got laid off, then my husband got laid off, and then, wow. you know, we sustained our home and our bills yeah. off of our savings until we no longer had any yeah. left to do. And then we found ourselves kind of like at this crossroads of what do we do? And during that time, he and I separated, mm -hmm. right? And so then here I come, and now it's the initiation, which is where you typically see the hero, the protagonist in the story, mm -hmm. they meet a mentor. Well, I actually ended up having two mentors, both of which unfortunately are no longer with us, but um, Dustin Felder, mm -hmm. who was an amazing actor himself and also an incredible acting coach. Um, and then Michael Ajakwe, who was just I have before, yeah. prolific. Yeah. You, you have to look them up. Let me ask you um, this real quick. Um, mm -hmm. You talked about the departure. That's yeah. that's the first step of the journey, mm -hmm. right? So that departure. So what was someone saying? You know what? I don't, I don't have, I don't have any physical thing that I need to depart from. So can departure also also be emotional as well? Absolutely. Okay. So yeah, it, it can yeah, be yeah, physical yeah. and emotional departure. Yes, okay. yes. Because and, and that's that's real. Like departure looks yeah. different for right, each people. Right. It's not just the physical like leaving one location right. and going to another right. it could be yeah. um departing from old behaviors yeah. and habits or relationships yeah. you know the departure will look different for each person right. in in the in their story right but that's a great question yeah. to ask because i'm sure there's probably somebody else that's thinking that as well so when we get to the initiation part there's the the mentorship mm -hmm. that happens and so both of these gentlemen took me up under their wing. They saw something incredible in me, something that I didn't even see in myself. And during that time, I also met you. Right. 
Right. And I think you're I, a third mentor. Just so my, I'm, I'm well, yeah, you were in some ways, <laughs> yeah. actually. Yeah. No, I, I'll give you that. Okay. I'll give you that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was amazing because I met both of them uh, through Don B. Welch, who oh, yeah. had yeah. an event in L.A. So I was here like in the where we live. It's called the Inland Empire. Yeah. And to go to L.A., that's at least an hour and a half yeah. drive. Right. Is he around still? Welch? Don B. Yeah, Welch? Yeah. yeah. OK. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, and so. <laughs> I was just driving. I was going like I'd use my mom's car yeah. to drive to L.A. because that's where you if you that's were going to be yeah. in, the, in yeah. the entertainment industry, you you pretty much <laughs> had to be in Hollywood. You had to be in L.A. So I that's the commitment that I made. And during that journey, I met these two gentlemen and then ultimately Anthony. Mm-hmm. And they really spearheaded like God used the three of you to really catapult my career in the industry wow. like quickly yeah. where I didn't come to Hollywood necessarily knowing anyone that could put me on. Yeah. And, and it's important to note that during that time I was also quickly approaching my 40th birthday. Wow. Okay. So that was yeah. the yeah. other thing yeah. is like, that's not the norm for somebody close to 40 to okay. then come to Hollywood and think, I'm gonna make it big in Hollywood. <laughs> I, 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 I know several who, who, who've, who've done that. They've done yeah. it, but that's not the norm, and we don't right. often get to yeah, hear yeah, those yeah, stories, yeah. right? What yeah. we hear is like the bushy, bright-eyed, tail, yeah. you know, young person that was like, "I didn't go to college, and I decided to go right. and pursue my career, and I went and slept on my homie's couch a for a little bit, a you know, be a waiter." Yeah. I didn't <clears> have that luxury because I had a two-year-old son in tow who was about to be three. And um, I was facing 40. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but that, so that happened, and those mentors helped to catapult me in a way that I would not have been able to on my own and very quickly. And then you, you cast me in three different projects. Three, okay. Right? Was mm-hmm. it three or four? I think it was three for sure. Yes. And I think the third one was the big project with you know opposite of um and you can say the name if you want to but opposite of two big celebrities yeah. right and um then i disappeared you disappeared where the heck did l go so it's interesting because i don't think we've had this conversation where you've shared your perspective on things like i've talked about what i was going through and yeah. how i disappear but i don't even think that i had shared with you that I even had lupus. No, you did not. So <clears throat> what what did you think? Cause we, like I just stopped, like I fell off the face of the earth and yeah. no one heard from me with a good reason. And we'll talk yeah, about it. But yeah. what was your perspective? Now you're that? taking me way, 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 way. I, and if you back. don't remember, it's um, cool. So I remember that we had the project mm-hmm. um, and that we had our big table read and, and everybody mm-hmm. was there. Um, after that, after that, you know, I, I'm not quite sure what I was thinking, but I, I knew that you were gone. Mm-hmm. And I, I know phone calls and emails and all that were, were una- unanswered. So I don't remember my exact thought back then, but it was like she just disappeared. She was gone. Mm-hmm. And back then I didn't know your husband, so I couldn't I couldn't call him if I, mm-hmm. and find out. Right. Mm-hmm. Or or even your mom. I didn't right. know anybody. You didn't know it. Yeah. yeah so you, you were just gone. And I was left. OK, you know, we have to recast this character. Right. But I don't remember my exact mindset back then or, mm. or, 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 or like what I was thinking. You disappeared and I wasn't sure like, you know, what happened. All I know is like, you know what? We got to recast the character. Yeah. Right? That's that's really all I know, because back then I was in producer mode. Mm-hmm. Right. So but not knowing that you were facing a real life threatening, life altering experience. And but we're back. We are back. And that leads me to the return. Okay. Right. The return. So we have the departure. Yep. And then the initiation. The initiation. Now we're at the return. Now we're okay. at the return. So it was, that was uh, 2011. Okay. When oh, I wow. ended up in ICU fighting for my life due to severe lupus complications. And it turned my entire world upside down. Of course. Um, It was also this major revelation that I had that my entire identity was wrapped up in being an actress. So I didn't even know who I was outside of being an actor. And so that made it extremely difficult for me to just really understand, like, what's next for me? Mm -hmm. Um, 
And so fast forward to, I believe, 2012 is where you and I ran into each other at the grocery store. (laughs) I do not remember that. (laughs) You were walking towards the grocery store door and I was behind you. I was walking, actually, because I lived very close to and um, I was going on a walk with my son and the grocery store was very near brothers. Yes. Yes. State of Brothers. Oh, off of and, and I and I said, um, God, this guy looks so familiar. Yeah. So keep in mind again at this time, we had just worked together. Yeah. We yeah. didn't have like a close relationship. And I said, God, he looks so familiar. And then I was thinking, you ever see somebody, you're like, what's their name? What's their name? What's their name? So the the other part of what was going on with me was that I dealt with a lot of memory loss, too. Mm. So it was just like little simple things that I would normally know. I just didn't even remember. I'm learning so much. And I was just like, no, I I didn't remember your name. I was like, hey, or I think you might have turned around and you saw me. And like, we were just like, yo, what's up? So we there was this reconnection um, that took place. And I remember there was a period where I was like, I can't remember his name. Yeah. And I don't know if you've ever found yourself in that situation where you're hoping the yep. other person says their name. Yep. So you don't have yep. to say, what's your name again? Yep. <laughs> well, that was me that day. But what happened was so pivotal. It was not only that we reconnected, mm. but we both reconnected at a time where we were pivoting right. and doing some things and um we started working together we ep'd on several projects Mm -hmm. so anthony helped me i gave him this vision for a project that i wanted to do for lupus awareness month which is may which is um you know something we'll be talking about Yeah. yeah this month we'll be talking about in some upcoming episodes but i wanted to launch this documentary mm-hmm. for Lupus Awareness Month alongside a Lupus Awareness Beauty campaign, mm-hmm. the first ever in the world, I might add, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which garnered the attention of L'Oreal Paris Woman of Worth, which I'm very, very proud of. Yeah. So we launched a national um, campaign that included the educational documentary as well as the lupus awareness beauty campaign. And that kind of just was the foundation for everything that mm-hmm. grew. Um, and he's been my brother, my baby brother. Ever I'm, since. I'm older than you. And you can be older than me. I'll be 52 this year. So what that make you? I, I won't say you're 42 and I was 32, but you know. No, I, you know, you listen, know. I have lived and I'm still living. So I'm going to always tell people my age. Your girl will be 52 this That's year. That's right. Um, but that that return really served as the catalyst for where I am today. Yeah. Because coming back outside, come, you know, finding yeah. my way back um, within humanity was very difficult because everything about my life, everything about my physical appearance had mm-hmm. changed so drastically and significantly. And I had to rediscover who I was. Yeah. And in that, I, you know, just started doing little yeah. things. But at the the basis of it all was always storytelling. So as a way to heal and kind of help myself navigate because I was looking for lupus support groups and everyone that I found online, it was just full of doom and gloom. It was yeah. really sad. And I I knew that in order for me to survive emotionally and mentally and to get my body to where I needed it to be physically, I needed to be in the right type of environment. Right, right. And I wasn't finding that online. So I just grabbed my Toshiba Mac, uh, MacBook, my Toshiba laptop one day and I press record and I just started recording yeah. myself sharing my journey and my story and then I published it to Facebook so this was before there was yeah. Facebook live or live on any platform and I wasn't thinking that I would get the response that I did but if there was ever a viral moment yeah, that, that for it. sure was one and it just it opened up so many doors, radio interviews, television interviews, digital publications, print publications, and then inquiries on, can you teach me how to tell my story? So over the, you know, ever since then, over the past decade plus, that's the work that I've been doing more 
intentionally with storytelling yeah. whereas before i was still doing storytelling but it was through a character yeah. now i get to help people uncover the power of their story and the work that i do leads me to the second framework and that's the future casting um oprah winfrey is a great example of that you think about the most um, not just entertaining, but inspirational, like Les Brown. He's mm -hmm. another one. They do a really great job at future casting, which simply means that you tell a story in a way that allows your audience to see their future selves. Right. Not see themselves where they are, right. but where they want to be. Which is right? super important. Which is super yeah. important. Yeah. So the two the two frameworks that I use the most in storytelling is the hero's journey and the, the future casting. Um, because it allows me to take people through the journey of being the protagonist, right. the departure, the initiation period, and then the return. But then it allows me to show them how to future cast or, fu you know, create this future vision for themselves without feeling super disconnected from it. Right. So I had to reinvent myself as a creative, as a business owner, as a storyteller. And most of the people that I work with, mm -hmm. they're at that stage in life. Let me say this. Earlier in the pod, you were talking about sales. Right, you're yep. saying how you really don't like sales because it's a different salesperson, right? Correct. So there, there are different aspects of selling and of sales. Mm -hmm. Your storytelling is sales, right? You don't know it's sales, mm -hmm. but 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 it's sales. And I remember at one of the meetups that the first one you came to, you got up and you told your story. Mm -hmm. um, you were selling and, and didn't know it because afterwards someone said, who is that? How much does she charge? I, w mm. I will pay it, right? So when we talk about sales, it's like whatever you're comfortable with, right? Yeah. And you're comfortable with, with telling your story, talking about your experience and let people see like the real you, who you, who you are, what you've been through, mm -hmm. and that's your way of selling. Yeah. Right. And so I I would say now that you love sales because your selling is telling telling your story. Right. Mm -hmm. That sales. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I want to throw that in, in there because you you're good at it. Right. <laughs> but you, you, you have your own method of selling. I have my own method of selling. Right. Yeah. Right. So I, if you say story selling, I'm cool. Story selling. But if you just say selling, I'm like, mm. Story selling. Not so much. Right. Well, we've had conversations <laughs> about this before. Yeah, but yeah. we go back. Yeah. It's, it, listen, you are not the only one. Like, I think I have yeah. um, in my other business, you know, we've talked about before on the podcast, and I was talking to a prospect, mm -hmm. and I was saying, like, you know, I, I don't like sales. Yeah. And they were like, sis, you really are a great salesperson because <laughs> you, like, you have sold yeah. me on this thing. You like bills better? <laughs> Like bills better? Absolutely not. Like, there you go. No. <laughs> you, you, you gotta pick one. Sales or bills, you know. Sales or you bills. Have them both. I got plenty of bills right. in my life that are like Uncle <laughs> right. Bill, cousin Bill, right. but right. I don't know. Yeah, but but the the thing about being a part of your story is really being authentic, being vulnerable, and being congruent with what you've what you've been through. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a lot of times, our story we think, okay, if it, if it's not boring, then okay, you know what? My story is is so, so traumatic, so so bad. I've been through a lot. No one else has been through this, right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that's not true. No, that, that's not true. So people are waiting for permission to tell a story or say, you know what? Wow, I've been through the exact same thing as as, as L or Anthony. I thought I was the only one, and we get to a point where we think we're the only one that has experienced that exact same issue in our life right. but, it's, but it's not true right which is why i always say your story might be about you but right. it's not for you right it's not for you it's not for you it's it's for somebody else because i have tons of stories that i can just talk about like you know what i i thought it was just me yeah going through that mm -hmm. right but it's mm -hmm. not so so talk more about the journey well, the journey of storytelling or mine yeah, with it, with that. You're saying that the departure. Yeah. So the departure is the end part. Right. And then okay, we, future we, casting. the future okay, casting. Uh -huh. Right. And so what I what I'm able to do with that and, and my framework is 
I talk specifically to people who find themselves and mo- more often than not, they are women over 45 okay. who find themselves at a pivotal moment or season in mm-hmm. their lives where they're having to reinvent themselves, but they don't know how to, um, to your point again about the storytelling, they might not feel like their story is powerful enough or that they even have one. So my process and framework allows them to see their future selves Mm -hmm. now without being so disconnected to it. So if I just say, uh, you know, imagine a year from now you're making a million dollars a month. Right. Well, that might, you know, be exciting to somebody. Right. But if I reframe that through story Mm -hmm. and create this visual picture of imagine you're on vacation with your your husband or, you know, you've been able to take your teenage son and Mm -hmm. his friends to uh, Dubai for 30 days to vacation and um, and we're talking about more specifically the vehicle being podcasting. right? Right. And I take them on this journey through storytelling of all the beautiful things that are happening in their lives as a result of them leveraging podcasting to share their story, their message. Right. It's not just about the end result being a million dollars a month. It becomes the journey, who you have to become, who you get to become become in the process, the things that you get to do, the experiences Mm -hmm. that you get to create, not just for yourself or for your loved ones, but even for your community. Those nonprofit organizations or causes that you care so much about, now you're able to give more time and funding to those things because you now have this time and financial freedom yeah, to yeah. be able to do that. Yeah. And the reason why you're able to do that is because you've leveraged this powerful tool of storytelling and podcasting yeah. to scale your business, your visibility, your reach, which also storytelling makes you relatable right you know it 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 creates credibility and authority in your space so even if it makes you valuable it makes you you valuable valuable. you're an asset like an irreplaceable asset because here's the thing you can have two people that have very similar experiences but their stories are going to be completely different Mm -hmm. and and your story is like your fingerprint right even twins don't have that they have the same dna they might have the same looks but they're Their fingerprints are different. Everyone has a different fingerprint in this world and it's unique to you. That's what your story offers you, right? And and sets you apart. So being able to leverage the power of storytelling and podcasting or storytelling in media as a whole is one of the things that I do and we do collectively to help our clients be set apart in these crowded, oversaturated marketplaces. So it doesn't matter what industry they're in, they're still going to stand out. When you start to speak to the heart of who a person is Mm -hmm. through story, that's when you see the difference. That's when you'll see the increase in your income. That's when you'll see the increase in your profitability and your reach and and your impact in everything that you do. Your value skyrockets. But so many people are doing one of two things. They're either telling stories the wrong way. They're telling stories that are they're doing it for the wrong reasons. And they're telling it from the wrong place with no strategy, no framework, no understanding of storytelling formulas and how to really make a connection with people. Or they're just sitting on the sidelines like, oh, my story's not good enough or I, I'm not a good yeah. speaker. Everybody has yeah. to learn. Most most business owners, um, we, we're kind of like, I guess I'll, I guess I'll say brainwashed for lack of a better term, brainwashed and thinking that, that it's a one size fits all. Every, every, every business treats a business like a billboard business. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm gonna just set up a sign on the freeway and whoever drives by, mm-hmm. that's my customer. And something that that you said was super important is that you were you were looking for people who are forty five and older who are women, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. you knew your customer, you knew your avatar, mm-hmm. and most business owners have no idea who they're selling to, who their product right. is for. They put up a sign, open a website, click open, and thinking that everybody that walks through their door is their customer. You may it's make a few bucks, method. right? 
<laughs> you may make a few bucks, but that's not that's not long lasting scale of business. You have to know exactly who you're talking to. Mm-hmm. And one thing that you said before was that 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 the way it made me think is like you tell your, you tell your story, but it's the story that you should be telling mm-hmm. because we can say anything. We can we can talk about whatever the weather, or, or we can hold back and not be vulnerable. But what is the story we should be telling to our to our customers, right? Absolutely. And most of the time, you're a customer is who you were two, three, four, five years ago, right? Yep. Because you mm-hmm. created a solution for yourself, mm-hmm. and now you're able to take that solution and and sell it, or give it away, or speak about that solution to people that you want to bring into into your business and, and speak authentically. Authentically, yeah. And that makes business one easier and more fun. Mm-hmm. Most business owners actually hate what they do, right? So I'm like, okay, if that's the case, then just go back to your job, you know, because it would be easier, right? If if you're in business and doing something that you don't want to do, then you might as well go and get a job because that's that's where yeah. that's the feeling. Go ahead. Is it that they hate what they do, or is it that? They love what they do, but they didn't anticipate all the other things right. that come with what they need to right. do to do that thing. So, i.e. marketing, right. i.e. sales. Right. A lot of times we just think I'm passionate about this right. thing. I know I'm really good at it. I know I can help people with it. But then you don't factor in right. all of the other things that, and that you makes you to, hate it. In, in long that run. makes you. Yeah, yep. that makes you hate yep. it in the long run. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I thousand percent agree with that. I want to go back to the the ideal we've heard ideal client Mm -hmm. ideal avatar ideal customer whatever terminology you all relate to um but think about again the story think about your most favorite film right there's a reason why mario brothers is holding at the number one spot in the box office with over a billion dollars in ticket sales hear me is 7 billion people on the planet. A billion dollars in ticket sales. Now, Mario is not a real character. He was, a he, was, he, was, he was a real character when I was on Mushrooms. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you know was, these people, this is a drug-free <laughs> podcast. Plant, plant medicine. <laughs> oh, go, go ahead. <laughs> Ooh, he Mario. always throws something Mario. left, and I'm just like, what, what's, 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 what's he going to say today? What's he going to say today? But my point is, is that they uncovered a really powerful way to not only tell this incredible mm-hmm. story, but con- they have an, an avatar. Yeah. They created a character mm-hmm. that they knew, whether it was based on nostalgia, because to your right. point, we grew up on Mario yep. Brothers. My kids grew up on Mario Brothers, so there's a sense of nostalgia that's mm-hmm. there, and they appeal to that part of certain people, plus the kids that are coming up. So they had a very right. clear understanding of who their ideal avatar was, and it's one person. Yeah. It's one person. It, it wasn't defined by age. If I had to go into their marketing meetings, I guarantee you age wasn't necessarily yeah. one of the number one things that yeah. came up. It was the nostalgia piece. It was about, there's it, just like Sonic. Sonic right. is a fictive, that right. was a huge film. As an adult, I enjoy watching it without yeah. my son. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But there's certain parts, there's parts of that character that they've created that speaks to the character mm-hmm. of their business, right? The, of their avatar. Right. Right. Yeah, you, right. you all tracking what I'm putting down? So you've got to be, don't overlook the importance of really identifying who your ideal right. audience is avatar client customer is filmmakers do it all the time right and that was just one example i'm gonna say it one more time one billion dollars yeah. in ticket sales every every successful business knows their customer knows their avatar <clears throat> i mean and, and i'm just saying um if you go to neiman marcus louis vuitton mm-hmm. um are they in certain lower income areas of of the world mm-hmm. of 
So what about Walmarts and Targets? Are they in certain high income areas? Well, maybe Target, but but where is Walmart? Where are liquor stores? You're going to find Target more in middle class. You're going to find Walmart. Because Walmart has tried to elevate their brand in a lot of different ways, they're like borderline at the top tier part of low end going, trying to make their way. But they're yeah. still Walmart. Yeah, look at right? look at look at liquor stores and and gun shops and yeah, you're not gonna go in the suburbs and see not. liquor stores. You're not. You're I mean, not. every every business does research and they know their customers. And I I think because we used to have a Nordstrom's up here at, at the mall, Tata Mall, it's gone now, right? Because yeah. I don't think that 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 they thought that the affluent customer was out here, but nope. they're not, nope. right? So it's it's important that you you know who you're speaking to. Um, and, and in your story, I, I love Joe Rogan because he said, you know, be the hero of your own story. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And Super Mario Brothers, um, the Bad Boys movies, all these movies that have sequels and all that. The Equalizer the equal, 3 is the, coming three. out. Oh, my oh, it gosh. It is? Wow. Yes. I know that. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, the hero evolves yeah. and does different mm-hmm. things. So mm-hmm. you can tell your story over and over and over again, but it will evolve and you will have, you know, different kind of sequels and, you know, threes and fours. So, but first is that you got to be the hero of your own story. Yes. And you have to stand up and be brave and be vulnerable and and, and be willing to take what comes with that. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But are you going to be more inspired by the people who, who, who find inspiration and joy and motivation in your story? Or are you going to be uh, more demotivated by the three or four people who, who who call you out on your BS. Every every business owner says that, you know what, I got to see the whole stairway before I take a step, right? Yeah. You don't have to see the whole stairway. You can see the, just like, one step at a time. Mm-hmm. You do that and you will you will find success. But just knowing who you're talking to, knowing that you got to be vulnerable and be courageous and, and knowing that, you know, this is me. Yeah. This is my story and this is what I live. This story made me who I am today. Good or bad, it made me. Mm-hmm. Now, what if that story can go out there and help someone else? Yeah. If it helps someone else, then that can help you make some money. Yeah. Right? Yep. And you're absolutely right. I, I want to kind of pause here for a second because we've seen it mm-hmm. um, happen a lot. One of the worst things that you could do is embrace this the truth of like storytelling is something that you should be doing as a creator, Mm -hmm. business owner, corporation, but then you tell these manufactured Mm -hmm. stories. People don't like to be lied to. They don't want to, you know, be misled. And it is a surefire way to completely blow up and demolish any bit of credibility, authority or trust that you have in the marketplace the better thing to do is and again and I've, I've shared this you know in the past where most people think like there's only one or two storytelling frameworks yeah, yeah. or formulas there's more than the rags to riches yeah, yeah, you know yeah. um, you might not have a, a near death experience that you need to talk about but it's important to make sure that you understand the different Mm -hmm. types of stories the formulas and how to craft your own story in a compelling way that Mm -hmm. really allows your audience to see themselves in your story because again it might be about you but it's not for you yes you'll see much more longevity you'll build incredible trust with your audience and with trust comes community you know and it's all the things that we're really really passionate about so um, in our show notes you'll have the link to you know get your copy of the brand story profit guide which is a comprehensive guide that teaches you Mm -hmm. not just why storytelling is really impactful and powerful and why you need to be telling stories Mm -hmm. now um, in 2023 and beyond but it'll give you some really um, great real life examples of how other brands and corporations yeah. have used them and begin to you know get you to thinking about how you can incorporate storytelling into your own marketing we have like you know worksheets in there that you can yeah. work through and, and jot down uh, some information and in your ideas as you're you know going through the guide as well so make sure that you click the link um, that will be provided in the show notes for you as well for that but yeah you got to get out of this mindset that you have to look, be, and sound like someone else. <laughs> I don't understand why people want to yeah, do that. Yeah. 
Like you are unique. You are a unique being. You are not a monolith. You have so many different layers to you there's yeah. layers to your story like i i told you just two yeah. different yeah. stories maybe three yeah. right and people get tripped up on well i have a lot of stories to tell i don't know which one to tell what season are you what in? Season are you in? Yep. what's the goal <clears throat> what's right. the end goal for this right. thing right now right but that's my take on storytelling um we could go on and on yeah, okay. about this topic it's something that we're both really really passionate yeah. about um, but I know that we provided, you know, some really valuable insight on how to leverage storytelling, why storytelling, and gave two really tangible yeah. examples of um, two really powerful and impactful storytelling frameworks. So right. I'm, I'm super excited about that. Yeah, same here. And um, storytelling is something that every business needs and you have to have if you want to get to the level that you want to be at. Right. Um, and we actually walk you through step by step in the membership area uh, on how to tell an effective story and L does an amazing job on really building your anchor story right yes. mm -hmm. so but that's reserved for our exclusive members um, so down below is a link to join our membership club you will not be disappointed if, if you want to build scale grow and achieve levels that you have not achieved now join us in the membership area and uh, we will see you on the other side what you got to say in closing for us? As always, thank you all for tuning in, whether you're listening on your favorite podcast platform or on YouTube. We really appreciate you taking the time to spend with us each week, checking out each of our episodes. We have so much in store for you all. Uh, we're, we're excited to continue to serve you through this platform and really look forward to continuing to build community with you. This is where we come to talk all things creation is the number one podcast for creators in the world. So if you want to learn how to scale your brand, and Ooh, your say business, that again. it's number one. Ooh, it's chills. the number one podcast for creators <laughs> in the world. The world. Yes, <clears throat> this is what we stand by. We don't we don't just come and talk. We yeah. it's an unscripted show, but we take the time to prepare for each episode. So we're doing deep dive research. We're looking to see what are the things that you all want to learn about? What what is going to serve you at the highest level right now? So with that, we want to always invite you to talk to us talk back to us get with us on social media you'll see our social media handles listed um, but let us know what is it that you want to learn more about or hear from who do you want to hear from because mm -hmm. we have some exciting guests lined up for upcoming episodes as well we just want to thank you for being on this journey with us make sure that if you're listening you rate this podcast Please subscribe the podcast. to yes. the podcast share with your family friends co-workers neighbors your colleagues your partners share with your kids teachers you know anyone that you know that um, is a creator and has a story to tell we want to welcome you all into this incredible community we were born to create so don't put us in a box and don't you dare allow anybody else to put you in a box either because you too were born to create thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the next episode we'll of the later. born to create podcast. podcast take care guys we love you guys see you see you in the next episode have an amazing day week month wherever you are enjoy bye peace